And I swear to you, it felt like he reached into my head and pulled me out of my body as a formless consciousness, a fly on the wall. And then he pulled me through different environments, many of which I had noticed. It was the terrain of if you had superpowers, would you use them in order to make life a little easier? For example, if you could see the future, would you use that ability to you know, win the lottery? Well, I tried. It's no surprise to many of you if you're subscribed that I have the ability to leave my body. It's not something that's so far-fetched, it's actually quite straightforward. A lot of us have the ability to just slide out whenever we want. Matter of fact, a lot of you do it by accident when you're sleeping, it's just you're not consciously aware of it. And more on that in a later video. But let's say you are conscious of it. Let's say you are able to slide out of your body. You're aware now that you're in a completely different place. And you have the ability to move throughout time. Now, would you choose to head off into the future and take down those lotto numbers, come back, and then win the lottery? I tried that. And, you know, it seems bloody obvious now. But at the time, I just naively thought that I could just leave and go straight there. When I got out of my body, it became apparent to me that I didn't know where to go. Where? Where in time should I go to be able to see the lottery numbers? Think about it, like where? If you had a time machine right now, where would you go to see the lottery numbers? Of course, if we're in 3D, it's easier. You can just turn on the news. You can just check out the websites, right? The lottery websites. And then from there, write things down. But what they don't tell you is that in the astral plane, electricity doesn't work. The light bulbs don't work, your computer isn't gonna work, nothing works. So how are you gonna do it, right? I was stumped. But then I remembered that the majority of astral planes are alive, including our plane of existence. It listens to us. And it will respond to our wishes if you throw them out there. Over here we call it law of attraction, right? And every different dimension will give you a response in a different way. Some dimensions don't, I call them dead dimensions. And so whilst I'm there, I feel like I've just hit a standstill, I then decide to tell the reality around me what I'm trying to do and to show me these numbers. I then lay back down in my bed and I see a whole bunch of post-it notes falling from my ceiling. They're just materializing and falling. And as this is happening, I'm able to see different numbers coming at me. My memory sucks. <laughs> And I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to remember all of these numbers? I just need seven of them. And so I often found myself coming to, writing them down, and then going back under. Coming to, writing them down, coming back under, until I saw those digits, right, those seven digits. I tried at one point to write out my hand, expecting that if I came back to my body, I'd still see it on my palm, but of course, no, because it's not. That's not how it works. You can't take things from there and bring them over here without a substantial amount of energy. So I just kind of gave in to this idea of going under, coming back, writing down, going under, coming back, writing down. And when I got those seven digits, I was so excited. But you know, if it's not meant for you to win the lottery, Destiny has a crafty yet sneaky way of letting you know. <laughs> I looked at the lottery numbers and actually posted them on my Instagram. Each number was one digit behind. And it felt like in that moment, I had been moved, if that makes sense. Like I was about to win the lottery. I was about to go on that path. I was about to experience that quantum reality. And yet something just kind of knocked me to one side and kept me on the path that I'm already on. And so, I was quite disappointed. 
And another subscriber said to me, hey, why don't you just do the $1 million paranormal challenge? If you're able to prove the existence of paranormal you know, abilities, supernatural abilities, then you could walk away with a million dollars. The only issue is, is they disbanded that challenge in 2015 because a thousand applicants couldn't prove the existence of the supernatural and or supernatural abilities. Another subscriber came to me and said, hey, let's team up. You go and astral project and look for oil, untapped oil on the earth. We'll set up a mining operation and then you'll become rich beyond your imagination. I didn't like that idea for obvious reasons. And then another subscriber said to me, hey, why don't you just prove the existence of giants? Leave your body and then look for the remains, right? Sounded like a good idea, but at that point I had become defeated. And so I put the idea of making money using astral projection to one side. And I just did what most people do, you know, just get to work. <laughs> Five months later, I'm laying in bed and I'm in the hypnagogic state. It's the state of being where you could slide out if you want to, or you can just return back to your body and come to here, right? In 3D. And whilst I'm in that state, I start seeing all these faces. And the last one that I see is made out of sacred geometry. It's this man. And I swear to you, it felt like he reached into my head and pulled me out of my body as a formless consciousness, a fly on the wall. And then he pulled me through different environments, many of which I had noticed. It was the terrain of England. And then we come to a standstill and I'm in front of these huge mounds, these luscious green mounds, right? Just like the ones that you would see in the old TV show, The Teletubbies except these are a little bigger for obvious reasons, which I'd soon come to know. This sacred geometrical face is now a sacred geometry body that seems to be working in harmony, breathing and moving with the environment. As I'm seeing more sacred geometry coming out of these mounds, out of the mountains and through this being, he then disclosed that he belonged to a race of giants and that they're buried in these mounds. Matter of fact, the burying of these giants is a sacred practice to them. Whilst he was saying that others just completely got up and they started interacting as if they were alive, there were no issues between them getting their points across. It was as if they were animated. It's just they had moved into a different body. They had kind of ascended. And then he had the bright idea. He pointed at his mound and said, hey, if you'd like, you can come to Scotland and dig me up. I was like, there's, what, there's the solution, but it seems incredibly risky. I don't have the money to go on this, this crazy expedition. And what if I'm wrong, right? What if I, <laughs> what if I go there and I'm in the wrong place? I mean, I don't doubt for a second that there are giants under mounds. Trust me, it's just there's a lot of mounds and a lot of ridges and well, areas in Scotland that could be there for a while. And it was just me on my lonesome. It didn't seem like a small idea at the time. So I just, um, I didn't say no to him. I just nodded. And then I returned back to my body and I put the idea down. And so, if either of you have the money and the time, and or you already live in Scotland, and you'd like to take a, a digger to these mounds, to unearth these giant remains, pun intended, then uh, by all means do so. And then let me know what you find.